Heat Code, Support Strategists, by Clouds, My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down, on AO3. Chapter 10, Classroom. Izuku tugged at the knot of his tie again, trying to get it vaguely to resemble a triangle at the very least, and tried to ignore Katsuki, who was glaring at him from the other end of the train. It was just his luck that they had left at the same time and ended in the same car, but from the map of UA he'd been sent alongside with the acceptance letter, the support class were in an entirely different part of the building than the hero courses, so they would have to head in the separate direction as soon as they arrived, and he could meet up with May, easy as pie. Even though he'd already been there for the entrance exam, walking into UA as a student was an overwhelming experience. He hadn't even realized he'd stopped just outside the door until Katsuki, roughly shouldered, checked him, knocking him over the three holes. Stay out of my way, Deku. Izuku instinctively tensed up, wondering if Katsuki had finally had enough of his new attitude and he was finally going to die before class even started. But Katsuki just walked away, even sparing Izuku a backwards glance as he headed towards the hero course. He supposed that even Katsuki wasn't overly confident enough to attack them in the halls of the best hero school in Japan, where a pro could easily walk around the corner at any minute. Still, Izuku would have to start leaving earlier if he wanted to avoid being jumped outside the gates. As soon as Katsuki was finally out of sight, Izuku let out a breath of relief and walked in the opposite direction, relying on the map that he'd memorized to find his way to class 1F. The school was a little like a maze and Izuku wondered how much of that was intentional. It must make it more difficult for villains to find their way around if they ever got inside. Or maybe Nessa just remodeled the school this way to get some petty revenge on humans and let them know what running a maze felt like. Honestly, it was probably both. Eventually, Izuku found the correct hallway and was met with a handful of Mei as soon as he turned the corner. Why are our teachers so cruel, Izukun? Mei sobbed into his shoulder. Izuku's mind started racing. Were the teachers here going to be like the ones in Aldera? He just assumed that they were kinder because they were pro heroes and were supposed to save people. What if they were just as bad? No, they'd be worse, actually, because they'd had more training. Before his brain could even fully process those thoughts, May started speaking again. They locked the lab and won't let us in until the teacher gets here. Why, izuku I need to make my babies. Izuku practically melted in relief. Their teachers weren't actually cruel. It was just May being May. Not that her outrage didn't make sense. It was just as objectively bad when Izuku had been thinking. The lab being locked down might be an inconvenience, but it wouldn't feel like the end of the world to anyone else besides her. May, it's the first day, Izuku reminded her gently. And don't pretend like you wouldn't just blow something up if you were allowed in there right now. It's part of my progress, izuku May insisted. You can't have success without a little failure. Maybe so, Izuku said patiently, but it still makes sense for them to want to supervise us until they know we could handle ourselves. She pouted at that but relented and pulled away by the wrist and sat on the hallway floor next to the other students who must be their future classmates. They've been staring, something Izuku was sure he'd get used to the longer he hung out with Mei, but they quickly looked away when they noticed him glance their way. Mei pulled out a sketchbook and started sketching out diagrammas for her latest invention, while Izuku immediately took advantage of the time to analyze their classmates' quirks, or at least those that were obvious from glances which surprisingly wasn't that many. There were only two students with obvious mutations, and the rest looked normal. But Izuku supposed the less obvious mutations, like the crosshairs and May's eyes, would not be easy to unsee if he had an actual conversation with them, and had the opportunity to get close and personal. Of the two with mutation quirks, one had mutations similar to gang orcas, with the head of a great white shark rather than a killer whale and the other had large pointy ears and a bald head, though Izuku didn't know if the baldness was quirk-related or a stylistic choice. Wait a second, he didn't have his eyebrows either, which meant it was most likely due his quirk. Izuku, you're muttering again, Mei said distractedly. Izuku jolted and realized that the kid with pointy ears was blushing and the rest of the class was looking at him nervously. Oh, Izuku smiled awkwardly at the kid. Sorry, I'm... Uh trying to be more aware when I'm doing that, but I would be interested if you wanted to tell me. The kid looked like he 
really didn't, but also didn't know how to say no. Um, I have alopecia. I don't think it's linked to my quirk, but it might be, since a couple of others in my family have it too. And, well, we have similar quirks. He trailed off, and as much as Izuku wanted to ask him what his quirk was, he didn't want their classmates to think he was creepy. Actually, it was probably too late for that, since the rest of the students in the hallway already seemed to be avoiding him in May. Still, the kid probably didn't feel comfortable telling Izuku his quirk, so he shouldn't press the issue. It was more likely come up eventually anyways, since most classes shared their names and quirks on the first day, something that he wasn't looking forward to at all. At least he wouldn't lose any friends when it came out that he was quirkless. Izukun? May asked suddenly. Did you see that Kamara Woods fight yesterday? Izuku nodded eagerly, grateful for the distraction. It was against the Torso villain, right? Yup, me confirmed. So what did you think? He thought for a moment. Well, it wasn't a good matchup. At least not with how the two currently fight. Izuku's strength and speed and capture. So Shell Shock's natural slowness put him at a huge disadvantage. It could have gone a lot different, though. His shell is hard enough that physical attacks are useless against him. Not that that would have helped against Komuro's Lake Gwent's chain prison, but it would have thought to use as a shell, as a blunting weapon. He would have probably broken out of that trap fairly easy. One of Komuro's major weaknesses is how soft his wood is, since it grows so fast. Mmm, May grinned and wrote something down. What do you think about the turtle shell armor? Isuku grimaced and shocked his head. Too heavy. There's a reason why torsos are so slow. Turtles, however, can move pretty quickly in water. So, idea might be more practical for water combat, like sea kill. And if there were air chambers to help with the buoyancy, the armor wouldn't stick, even if it's heavy. Me brainstormed happily. She scribbled out some of the things she had already written down and turned a page into her sketchbook. They spent the rest of the way discussing various hero fights. Izuku had seen that week and discussed how mimicking the strengths of or the covering the weakness of both the hero and villain. Izuku was vaguely aware of the classmates discreetly edging away from them, but he couldn't bring himself to care. Natsuki had told their old classmates he had already made it wonderful here how creepy his notebooks were, but Izuku was at UA to become the best analyst he could be, so he wasn't about to let some judgment classmates hold him back. He was honestly lucky that Mei had sat next to him in the exams. He probably would have still met her since they were in the same class and everything, but he would have been a thousand times more nervous. The bell rang this power load around the corner. Mei immediately shoved her sketchbook into Izuku's hands and jumped in her feet, running up to the new homeroom teacher so quickly that she almost ran into him. Are you going to open the lab now? Can we get straight to work? When can I start making my babies? Power Lord took a step back in shock and then sighed in resonation, making Izuku giggle softly. He must have gotten a taste of May's analytics during the invention portion, which must have been a total nightmare because he knew for a fact that May had caused at least one explosion during the test. Poor guy. Hatsumi, please calm down, Power Lord pleaded. And yes, we'll be going into the room for a few minutes, but I have some things to explain first. May looked like she was about to argue, so Izuku stood up and tugged her arm. Come on, just be patient a little longer, okay, May-chan? May pouted and plopped down on the floor again. Okay, but if he takes too long, I'm picking the lock, okay? Power loader already looked done. It's an electrical lock. You can't get in without a passcode. I'll just have Izuku hack it then. It'll take longer to hack the keypad than to listen to Power Loader. Izuku turned to the teacher. I'm sorry about her. She's just been really looking forward to this. It's fine, Power Loader sighed. Okay, for the rest of you... Thanks for being patient. You all know me from the entrance exam, but I'll go ahead and introduce myself again. I'm Power Loader, your homeroom teacher, and I'm also the head of the support department here at UA. Yes, this includes all three emphasis. Though design and analytics each have a teacher that is responsible for those students specifically. Who are they? A girl with brown curly hair asked. Midnight is in charge of the design track, Izuku said. He remembered that much from their brief conversation that they were talking to Nezu's office. As for analytics, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's Nezu himself, right? I feel sorry for whoever is in the analytics track, the kid with the shark head shivered. I heard Nezu is a total monster. Izuku frowned. He hadn't really talked to Nezu that much since he'd been more focused on trying to hack UA, but from their brief interaction, he hadn't seemed like a monster at all. If anything, he was just looking for some entertainment. 
since being so intelligent meant he got bored quickly. He had heard that Nessie could be a little scary, but so far, Izuku didn't see any reaction to be afraid of him. Can everybody just shut up so we could get this over with and get into the lab? May complied loudly. Power loader clear his throat. Um, yes, of course. I'm sure you remember that we asked each of you what tools and materials you wanted, correct? Well, we've included those items in your personalized workstations. When you enter the lab, find the table with the tools you ordered. There are also nameplates on each desk to make it easier to prevent confusion. We have to go to the opening ceremony in 20 minutes, but that time is yours to get familiar with the space and set up your station the way you like it. You've already passed the lab safety test, but please be aware that if you are caught engaging in unsafe lab procedures, you will receive detention and a ban from the lab until you have demonstrated that you are willing to follow the rules. Power to look at May as she said that. The last part, and Izuku hold back laughter. Nay would never do anything to jeopardize her lab access. She would, however, bend the rules as far as they could go and use every loophole into her advantage. And Izuku would probably get dragged into helping her. So maybe the answer to the exam hadn't quite been long enough for Power Loader to get to know her. After all. Oh well, he'd figure it out eventually. Power Loader entered the access code and me rushed past him the second the door was open, while Izuku followed the rest of the class at a more acceptable pace. The lab was large, with about 10 large workbenches and acted as desks. Support classes attempted to be a little smaller than the average class because the space and supervision needed, but Izuku didn't mind having fewer classmates. It just meant that there were fewer people to make fun of him. May already elbowed deep into her tools, practically drooling as she pulled them from their boxes and started testing them out. Izuku simply chuckled and left her to it since she would probably wouldn't hear him if she started talking to her now anyways, and started looking for his own workspace. He had a feeling that most of his classmates would find their tables primarily based on equipped tools that they would request, but Izuku hadn't really known what to ask for. He was an analytic, not an inventor, so he really all he needed was a computer with internet access, and maybe some notebooks. He said as much in the request forms, and made sure to tell them that he already had his laptop and that he'd used to buying his own notebook, so they didn't have to go out of the way for him. Which meant that Izuku was looking for a mostly empty workbench. He walked around the room watching as his classmates started finding their assigned areas. But every single one of the tables he could see were cluttered with tools and boxes. Maybe they just had too much stuff and had put some of the boxes on his table to keep them off the floor. That makes sense. It wasn't as though Izuku needed a lot of space to do his thing anyways, since he's used to running around the streets while chasing hero fights. He's just glad to be useful, even if the usefulness was just leaning some much needed table space. So that meant he'd had to rely on the little nameplates. He didn't want to bother anyone, so he went over to May's table and he knew what nameplate looked like, since she wouldn't have noticed him, and she did. She wouldn't care. They were actually really nice, not that he'd expected anything less from the best of UA. But each of them looked like engraved brass, and each had been screwed to the table so they wouldn't fall, even if they were a long, strong breeze. In May's case, an explosion. That was probably smart. Izuku walked over the room again, checking the nameplates of each table that didn't have someone already on them, only to come up empty. Power Loader had said Izuku was in Class 1F, hadn't he? Had they changed his assignment last minute? What if they sent him an email and Izuku had missed it? What if they just decided that he didn't need a desk? What if they decided not to let him into UI after all? Izuku shook his head and forced himself to take a deep breath. If they had decided to reclaim his access, the student ID he sent him wouldn't have let him pass through the gate this morning. So he was still a student of UA and didn't have to worry about that. But he still had to find his desk. Maybe he should ask Power Loader? What if he didn't want to bother him? And if he realized how stupid Izuku was when he realized he couldn't find his own desk and decided to expel him on the spot. It wouldn't hurt to do one more walk around the room and look at the name tags again, right? Maybe he just missed something. Who the fuck is Izuku Midoriya and why does he need a whole ass room? Izuku rolled around to look at the girl with brown curly hairs, which now he was thinking about it looked a lot more like wires. Could that actually be her quirk? No, he couldn't get distracted by the quirk scenes right now. Anyways, she was the one who called out his name for his attention. Actually, she's gotten the attention of the whole class, but Meg was looking over at her. Wait, did you say room? 
Isuka practically ran over to where the girl was gesturing to a door that was marked with the same nameplates as each desk. And sure enough, there was his name engraved on metal. Isuka pushed past the girl, realizing too late that he'd probably been rude, and rushed into the room. His room. The lights were off, but the room was illuminated by at least five monitors that Izuku could see, one of which was a giant flat screen that was mounted on a wall above the desk. There was a giant bookshelf against one of the side walls that was filled with notebooks, and Izuku fingered Twitch as he thought about filling them all. He heard a whistle behind him, but he couldn't put his eyes away from the rest as Mei came standing beside him. Wow, Hacker-kun, Yue doesn't do anything halfway, do they? Please tell me I'm not dreaming, Mi-chan, he said, breathlessly. I didn't even request all this. Yeah, sorry about that. Nezu went a little overboard. Izuku turned to see Paolo leaning against the doorframe, as the other students either crowded around him or looked in the window that Izuku hadn't noticed that looked into the rest of the lab. Power Loader was smiling slightly, though it could have been embarrassment or amusement of Izuku's reaction. Everyone, this is Izuku Midoriya the only first year in analytics track and Nezu's personal student, Power Loader introduced. It's been so long since Nezu had an analyst student and he got a little excited and intended on designing a workspace himself. This used to be a testing room. There were a few others on the side of you, but this way you won't be distracted by the noise of the lab or worried about lab accidents damaging your computers. Power Loader shot a pointed look at Mei, who was ignoring him in favor of grabbing Izuku's arms and jumping up and down. This is awesome, Izuku! Just imagine everything you'll be able to do with all these hacking babies! Izuku nodded, then remembered his manners and bowed to Power Loader. Thank you. I'll do my best to put this to good use. Power Loader nodded and smiled as he left. Mei gave his arm a registering squeeze before running back out the room into her own workspace. Izuku nodded in relief as he had a clear view of her desk from his window. He didn't know why that was so reassuring, but it would probably be because she was his only friend and he didn't want to feel alone again. The other students each looked at Izuku curiously before turning back to their own workspace, and he hoped that they wouldn't find him quite as creepy as they had before. And now they had a wall separating them, and he knew he was supposed to be analyzing everything. Izuku relentlessly sat down at his desk and started familiarizing himself with the computers. He had a feeling this was going to be a good year. This was a great chapter. It was a long chapter. It was a great chapter. I love Izuku getting his own room and his, like, confidence. Love it. Absolutely here and support it. As always, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, and have a wonderful day or night. And thank you so much for watching.